Hello, I'm Christine Mundua. It's good to have your company. Various African and European governments are pressing Ethiopia behind the scenes to start negotiations with local rulers of Tigray state. For a second week now, Ethiopian federal troops are battling forces loyal to the TPLF. Addis Ababa says it will achieve victory any day from now. Neighboring Eritrea is now also said to be involved in the conflict. We'll be talking more about that after this report. Stop the war. That's the simple demand of these Eritrean refugees in the Tigrayan capital of Mekele. They know war all too well, as they fled it before. In the late 90s, more than 70,000 people died in the border war between Ethiopia and Eritrea. They say what pains them most is that this war now is a war between people who speak the same language and share the same culture. They want it to stop. But neither the Ethiopian government nor Tigray want to back down. If we don't fight to defend, which is what should be done, they will wreck us and destroy us as a people. We have information that they have decided to unreservedly fight us. Those who attack Tigray will not just attack and return home. We will retaliate. The fighting is having serious effects for the entire region. Tigray admitted its forces fired rockets at neighboring Eritrea's capital, Asmara. It says Eritrean military divisions are fighting alongside the Ethiopian government troops. The fighting in northern Ethiopia's Tigray region has led to thousands fleeing to neighboring Sudan. But here, in this remote wasteland of eastern Sudan, authorities are struggling to build shelters. Here alone, 25,000 refugees arrived within a few days. They're exhausted, hungry and scared. A bomb came from the Eritrean direction and an attack from the direction of the Ethiopian federal government in the city. A lot of people died there. And I came on foot. I fled from there. I was afraid of the bombs and the strikes. A lot of buildings were blown up. Aid organizations are preparing for many more refugees. The Ethiopian state broadcaster is showing images of towns it says the Ethiopian military has, quote, liberated in Tigray. I am now joined by Samuel Getachu. He's a freelance journalist uh, joining us from the Ethiopian capital, Addis Ababa. Welcome uh, once more to DW News Africa, Samuel. Uh, at the beginning of this conflict, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed came on record basically saying that this conflict was an internal matter. Why is Eritrea now being pulled into this? Well, to understand uh, what's happening, uh, you have to be aware that uh, Eritrea was part of Ethiopia. Uh, they got their independence in the early 90s, uh, and they've been at war since 98. It was a TPLF government that uh, uh, started the war with uh, Eritrea and vice versa. And they've been at it since uh, 2018, and that's when the prime minister came to power and became prime minister and then suddenly decided to try to bring peace uh, and engage with Eritrea and bring some sort of uh, an engagement uh, good enough for him to be awarded the Nobel Peace Prize last year. Okay, Samuel, so the TPLF has accused Eritrea of, of getting involved in this, in, in this conflict. Uh, this is something that has been dis de denied by Asmara. But what can you tell us about that? Because we've also seen the TPLF say that they have attacked Eritrea. Has there been a response to that from the Eritrean side? Well, Eritrea keeps denying that uh, it's getting involved in this internal conflicts, as the prime minister said, uh, the Ethiopian prime minister. Uh, but even uh, the, either Ethiopia or Eritrea keeps uh, denying it. But TPLF clearly understands this war to be not just with the Abiy Ahmed government in Addis Ababa, but with Asmara, with Eritrea. And that's why they're, they've admitted they've taken some of the action they've taken, including sending uh, missiles to Asmara and damaging the airport, the Asmara International Airport. But uh, again, it's accusation going back and forth, but it's being denied strongly by the government of uh, Ethiopia and Addis Ababa. Samuel, 
in the event that the Eritreans do get involved, assuming that they aren't involved um, assisting the, the Ethiopian uh, troops, if that was the case, could one say that this would be the beginning of the end for the TPLF, having to defend itself against uh, the Ethiopian federal troops, in addition to that, um, Eritrean troops? I mean, it depends on who you ask or how you look at the situation. Uh, but it will be really tough for the TPLF to fight with uh, Ethiopia on one side, the Ethiopian government, and then try to defend themselves uh, with whatever force comes out of uh, Eritrea. Uh, you have to be aware that uh, the Tigray region is host of uh, more than 200,000 Eritrean refugees. And there's a strong bond, there's a strong connection between uh, the two people. But uh, it, has, it will be really, really difficult for the TPLF government uh, or you know, even then, the Prime Minister of Ethiopia has really appointed, he has appointed somebody else to be the interim uh, government in uh, uh, in um, uh, Makali. So it would be really tough to have to fight for the government of uh, Tigray, which they no longer exist in the books of uh, the government of Ethiopia, and mm. then fight with the Ethiopian mm. government and also fight with the Eritrean government at the same time. It would be a tough act uh, to follow, I think. Okay, you, you did mention the, the, the community of Eritrean refugees. Um, that number is about 200,000. What is their situation, uh, Samuel, very quickly? Uh, you know, the most basic information we're receiving is from Amnesty International, from the UN, uh, which has uh, called for some kind of uh, war crimes investigation with what's happening in Tigray. But we're hearing from the people that have actually gone to Sudan, uh, and they're telling us that there are so many people that are in limbo in uh, Tigray. Uh, couldn't even get the most basic support. Some of them are too young uh, to even walk, and some of, some are older older people. But we, the most basic thing we know is people are dying, and uh, the people that are affected are the most uh, the poorest uh, among uh, this uh, refugee. What is the status of the Ethiopian government's offensive on Tigray? After all, this is what started this conflict. Well, from the side of the Ethiopian government, they've said from day one that it was a TPLF government that engaged with them at the beginning, attacking a military sites. And that has been the story that, that has been told from day one. And the TPLF government just admitted a few days ago saying they were the ones who really started the conflicts. So, but the Ethiopian government insists that the conflict is ongoing. It will end very soon. They haven't set a date. A date. Uh, and the Ugandan president, uh, there was a, a speculation that uh, the Ugandan president would, could get involved trying to bring a ceasefire, but the Ethiopian government denied it, saying it's uh, fake news. So uh, that's that's where we are right now. All right, that's Samuel Gitterj speaking to us from Addis Ababa. Thank you, Samuel. Thank you.